today's show is brought to you by Blazin' M Ranch, Cowboy Music, Tall Tales, Tom Foolery, and Other Surprises. Right now, an hour to live and an hour to love. And, of course, one of our favorite guests to have on the program, Andrea, uh, Andrea Gigline, is with us, the president of Serving Success. And, Andrea, you always bring us such wonderful books and wonderful stories. It's yes. always uplifting to have you on the program. Well, thank you very much. And I want you to know that this book was actually given to a friend of mine, uh, Claire, by the author, Christine Carlson. Because you'll notice there's actually two authors on it, Richard mm -hmm. Carlson and Christine, mm -hmm. but Richard has actually passed away. And this is the story that his wife put together after his death about a beautiful letter that he had written. And Richard is actually quite a famous author. He wrote the entire series of Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Right. Okay? So it was very interesting to me. This author, Christine Carlson, actually went and donated her time to juvenile diabetes and did a presentation on this book. And as soon as my friend heard it and knew the work that I did, she said, this is a book you have to have. So she handed it to me on a recent trip to San Francisco and on the airplane I read it. It is the shortest book I've ever recommended. It's less than 50 pages long. And because it is a true story, it was one of the things. But the other thing that was so phenomenal, the base exercise in positive psychology is about gratitude and how to develop it and it's called a gratitude visit mm -hmm. and if you go to my website serving success I, I put it up there under your show for everyone to be able to download the exercise and what it basically is is an exercise where you think about someone in your life who you should be thanking and you actually think through what was it that this person whether it's a teacher a parent a husband a spouse just you know people affect our lives mm -hmm. and before before it's too late, start thinking about what is it that, how have people contributed to me? Uh, can we translate that to things also, uh, as, as well as people, to be grateful for what we have as well as who we have? Oh, absolutely. Um, this particular exercise causes us to think about people because right. what we have found okay. is that as we go through our life, we don't pay enough attention to the little things people do. Like someone m puts this cup of water here for you. Yes, and, and we, you th we, we thanked Jesse for that this morning. Good, good, good. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> um, but it's the types of things, there's so many little things in our lives that we need and use, mm -hmm. but we never think about where did that come from. Or that teacher who affected you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. something that teacher did, the, uh, that, and sometimes it could be a bad thing that a teacher did that actually inspires you. Discipline. I remember Abs my yes. third grade teacher, Mrs. Weir. Yes. She wore out her ruler on my hand. But oh. now you're grateful for that. I'm grateful for yes. that, exactly. <laughs> yes. yep. Well, and, and it's causing you to think. I mean, when I was taught this exercise and then in turn taught it in my executive women's groups, I will tell you that it was not my most favorite thing to do. I like to say thank you. I like to move along quickly. I don't like to think about and actually dwell upon that. Yeah, yes. it, I, and that is not the best way to be in the basis of positive psychology. Uh -huh. So I, of course, had to do this exercise myself, and the exercise is that you write the letter, you, you give thought to the person, write the letter, and then you don't just mail it, but you actually sit with the person and read it to them. Wow. Yeah. It was not the easiest day of my life, I will tell you. But then here comes this book, An Hour to Live. And what this was, was Richard Carlson had stopped and decided on the 18th anniversary to write a very beautiful letter to his wife. And he took his wife on a nice little path and sits her down and hands her this letter that was many, many pages long, but chronicled why he exactly appreciated having her in the life from the, the love of bringing children into his life to how she supported him through you know he had great success in his book series and then he invested the money in some technology companies that didn't quite go so well and how all the time she remain there. And you know what really makes you feel good? I know especially there's some people with cards, greeting cards, Yes. and they always write a lot of nice things on those cards. It makes you feel good when you get one of and, those. And, and therein lies the purpose of the gratitude visit. When you think back for yourself how people have helped you in all different areas of your life, what you're really doing is raising your own emotional level at that time. And then the impact that it has on someone else 
can never be measured. Mm -hmm. And I had the experience, because this is obviously a part of my work, I gave this exercise to a client, and unbeknownst to me, he wrote a very loving letter to his parents. And he hid the letter in a book in their library. And his parents were in their 80s, and unbeknownst to any of them, a few weeks later, the dad finds the letter, but he found it the day before he found out he was dying of cancer. So the letter was written without the emotion of knowing he was going to die and truly from my client's heart. And so the parents, and the father wrote and said, no one could have, no son could have given a father a better gift. And particularly because it wasn't because you think you're going to die. And that was the same way that this author unknowingly did it. It was their 18th anniversary. He was reflecting on the 18 years of their life together. And he wrote it. And that's why the gratitude visit is such a beautiful thing to put, not only for one person in your life, but think about it. I'm trying to work up to all the other people in my life. But I'm going to tell you, it's not, it's, it isn't the easiest exercise I've ever suggested. And really, everyone should take heed to this because I think in every person's life we have lost someone Absolutely. we have neglected to do this yes. for yes uh, even though they may know what we thought and Correct. how we felt about them Correct. we neglected to do this and so I think we ha uh, yeah oh that oh I've lost my train of thought that, that is so emotional. Well, let, let, let me help you think about that the opening line of this book is and it comes from another author Stephen Levin if you had an hour to live who would you call and why have you not made that call? So it's almost like a bucket list for personal Correct. relationships. Correct. And going back to the overall thing, you know, we need to have these messages. We are so busy in our lives. The reason there are so many of these books and these messages keep coming at us is that we need those gentle reminders. And this is a very short, to the point reminder and then what I've done is give you the how to actually replicate it in your own life. You know and I really think from a parent standpoint too we ought to do that for our kids. Absolutely. Uh, it's, I, don't, I think it's a two-way street. Absolutely. And you know a, an additional exercise on this speaking from myself now. Sure. Uh, a tag for this would be maybe an exercise or a class on how that person should receive and how do you receive this you know Correct. sometimes oh. I think it's easier to write this down if you are on the receiving end of this sometimes yes. it's a, a bit embarrassing you do, oh, don't thank me don't yes. you know yes, yes, yes. You, you take that stance that's how you feel I, I will tell you a story during my training so we do this and then part of the training is we then get back uh, into the class and you have to talk about what your, your experiences one of the experiences another student shared was she had a 90 plus year old grandmother goes so she, and the grandmother had actually raised her she writes the letter to the grandmother takes it to the hospital the grandmother reads it does not say a word mm -hmm. so the author felt a little you know dejected mm -hmm. a week later she gets a phone call from a sister saying did you write a letter to grandma do you realize that she's holding it in her hand every day oh. okay so to your point, oh. we do not know how to receive. Yeah. And the ability to allow, to be able to accept it. Yeah. And I know that it is, it, 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 I want you to know that it is something that and, raises and your we heart. we have lost the art of writing letters in America Correct. today. I, oh, love, I love the yeah. email as you do. Yeah. But you know, there's nothing like a personal letter, handwritten That's right. to somebody, and it means more yes. than life itself. It, and you're because right, on, the, on the email, we abbreviate everything. Yeah. We, we bring it down to a half a sentence. Correct. We bring it down to four mm. words. Yeah. You know, my mom had a, a cute line. Uh, my mom is Sicilian, and she had this cute line when, you know, that you, you give Mother's Day cards all the time, and, you know, sometimes they had thought to them, through the different decades of your life, sometimes they didn't. And then, I don't know, at some point, maybe I was around 40, I guess the cards started getting a little more sentimental. And she opens her Mother's <laughs> Day card and she said to me, hmm, you can tell you're getting old when the cards start getting nicer. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? And you know what, don't forget about the men. A lot of men would say they don't want letters like this, yes. and that's nonsense. Yeah, uh, I, I have had letters written to me that yes. have brought tears to my eyes. Yes, and I, and I am very fortunate. Both my daughter and my husband are gifted writers. And because 
because of that, I, I've got to step up to the plate a little bit more. You look magnificent, by thank the way. You. Thank you. you thank like you. You've had a very long. You look very. I'm good. very well. Very rested. long rest. And a great, great message today. <laughs> thank Get you. out there, write a letter to somebody you care about. That's right. Uh, when we come back, Dr. Joy Brown talking about the ups and downs, the bumps in life's road, especially when it comes to the uh, stressful economic and uh, times that we're having right now.